Hello, my name is Francesco Tripoli. I was born in Pennsylvania, South Central Pennsylvania, and my parents are Sicilian immigrants who come from actually just a couple of towns over along the coast as well, Carini. I grew up in a kitchen. I grew up pretty much glued to the side of my grandmother and my mother, learning from them what it means to feed people and learning from them what it means to bring people together around the table. I've cooked for the very well-to-do and I've cooked in certain environments. However, it doesn't, that kind of cooking in restaurants doesn't really feed me. I guess it was like 2015, we started to hear about an increase in the flow of refugees out of Syria and through Africa into uh, what is now called the search and rescue zone in front of Libya and obviously the situation in Lesbos. It was, um, I started to dive into the articles that were available to me. Even though I'd always been sensitive to people moving, I myself being uh, the child of immigrant, I didn't know so much about what was going on in the Mediterranean. Go back, go back, go back. Hey, release, release, release. I'm Kim Yeon-sik. I worked for about 10 years ago. I worked on the Sangson, but now I worked on Greenpeace or Sea-Watch, I worked on the Sea-Watch. Hey, 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 배를 타고 나서 이제 쉬는 시간이 많습니다. 3개월 정도 일을 하면 3개월 정도 휴식이 있어요. 그런데 이 시간을 좀더 보람차게 보내고 싶다라는 생각에 이곳 제주도에 털을 잡게 됐습니다. 70년대에 지어진 집 같은데 그래서 지붕에 비도 새고 또 아래 마루도 다 갈라져서 이렇게 삐걱삐걱 소리 나고 냄새 나고 개미도 많고 장판도 깔려 있지 않고 뭐 아, 상당히 낡은 집입니다. 어, 나의 일도 아직 안 됐는데 어떻게 남을 도와라고 이해할 수 있는데 사실은 그렇게 얘기하면 끝도 없이 그냥 저만을 위해 살 수밖에 없는 거죠. 그러니까 이제 제가 내일 지중해 몰타로 가서 지중해 난민들을 구조하는 구조 선에서 이제 일등 항해사로 일을 하기 시작합니다. 어, 세상에 항해사 면허를 가진 사람이 뭐만 명, 이만 명, 삼만 명이 되지만 수만 명이지만 값 없이 난민 구조선을 몰 사람은 많지 않다는 얘기를 듣고 그러면은 조건이 되고 
그렇게 의미를 찾고 보람을 찾는 내가 하면 좋겠다라는 생각이 들어서 지원을 해서 지금도 아, 하고 있습니다. 여기는 그 난민구조선 시와치 3호고요. 이 배는 지금 지중해 섬나라 중 하나인 올타의 발레타 항구에 접안해 있습니다. 야, 오케이, 이제 잠시만요. 야, 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 that sail with us on a mission. Um, and we'll have uh, the rib drivers, um, and we'll have, that's like one team. We also have the medic team. We have the engineers. We have the guys that are on the bridge, the captain, the first officer. Um, we have people that work with me on the deck. Um, and then we also have someone whose role it is to um, translate, so they speak multiple languages. Overall, the the crew is a volunteer crew. Can I ask your name? Uh, Antonio. Antonio, from? Um, I'm originally from Bulgaria, but I uh, live in Germany, in Berlin. I'm a medic. You're a medic? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's on the ship. Uh, you have to do everything. There are no sick people now. Been here for about each, each mission is normally around three weeks. The reason that we're here and the reason that we do all the work that we do is to, to get out into the search and rescue area and perform rescues where they're needed. The, we call it the MRCC, the Maritime Rescue Coordination Centre. And they will have heard of a, uh, a boat in distress and they'll direct us to, to the rough area. We uh, then go as fast as we can towards that area and then going out to sea on a, on a rubber boat that is not meant to be a seaworthy vessel. And going across the Mediterranean, uh, Mediterranean Sea, which is the world's most deadly border at the moment, and surviving that. <laughs>제도권이 만들어낸 죽음인 거예요. 리비아에서 만약에 이탈리아까지 비행을 탄다고 하면 100유로면 충분해요. 근데 이 사람들이 못간 이유는 뭐냐. 유럽에서 못 오게 하기 때문이죠. 더 안전하고 더 음, 빠르게 갈수 있는 방법이 있음에도 이 사람들은 고무보트를 타고 가다가 상당수가 죽는 거예요. that people who are in distress in a not seaworthy boat which is overcrowded so we went there and then 
we realized how big it was and that you get conf uh, confronted with people in distress. My profession is a locksmith. I have, a, I have my own company, Emergency Response. Who does spray with the slotenmaker? If people lock themselves out, or if they cannot can enter their house, or they, you know, or if there's a, I have another problem with locks, then I go there and uh, go to people their house and help them into their house, or I repair their locks or I put, I install new locks. Look. Well, that's it. That's it. Ooh. Welcome to your house. Yeah, so this is what I do and started doing this 15 years ago. It's a super nice job. I come there and solve their problem and people are happy and... Uh, I open the doors. I'm really good. That's magic, <laughs> that's magic yes. Whoa. It's just two minutes. It's not two minutes, mm. ten seconds. <laughs> Yeah, he's charging more for that. <laughs> wow. Because I'm really good. I'm trained. Uh, it's In the last uh, 15 years, I, next to my work, I try to do uh, projects I think it's important. And uh, one of these projects is Sea-Watch. In the last five years, I've been 12 times on a mission for Sea-Watch. And there was 10 times on the, uh, the stretch between Libya and Italy and uh, two times on the Greek islands. Because we, we were using different boats, it was that me with all the muscles. Your first mission? Yes, first mission. Huh? And uh, we... When the date? When the date? It's in June 2015. July, Ju huh? July 2015. And we help people to get on the container ship. This, the picture is taken from the container ship. Here you see me standing. No toilet now. No toilet. Just go. It was a really strange situation because yeah, you're standing there and you're just a locksmith from Amsterdam and you're there and you're the only hope they the only help they get. Rescue blankets, we need rescue blankets. I was born in Algeria, in the north of Africa. In the first four years I lived between uh, Algeria and Ivory Coast. My parents were from Europe. I could go to Europe. Other people who are born in the same spot, in the same hospital at the same time, they don't have the luxury to travel from Algeria to Amsterdam. It's, an, it's a strange world with uh, unfair and difference in race and difference in wealth and yeah. There is someone fall out of a boat here at the lake in the IJsselmeer in uh, close to Amsterdam. Then there is like 20 boats going there, and if there's uh, at the border of Europe a boat with 140 people falling in the water, then it's just a news item and no one talks about it. And for me, that was a really bizarre situation because how is it possible that there is such a big difference between uh, European citizens and people who are from somewhere else wanted to see what was happening there and also that I, that I know that I didn't just go on with my life while there was people drowning in the border of Europe. I still watch you my 
when you're grooving As if the water from the bottom of the pool You're moving without moving And when you move, I move. My real name is Reinoud I call myself Reinoud from the Netherlands, 13 years old They're all in the vibe in perfect view Like Jonah or me I remembered when, when I got really nervous, it's document, it's called the proof of life. So basically what I do, I write three questions to which I only know the answer. If I get kidnapped or something happens to me, they can see what you can ask those people. That was the first time I saw a document like that. And when I had to sign it, I was like, okay, this is serious. Wow. Wow. Oh no. <laughs> wow. When you move, I can recall something that's gone. Where's this? This is. When you move, honey, I'm putting all. <laughs> um, Reinoud was a um, quiet and a lovely boy, yes, he was a boy, <laughs> yes, he was a boy, yeah, yeah. When he was young, he had uh, football and hockey and swimming, no, he was a boy. Ja, de dag dat hij vertelde dat hij Sea-Watch ging doen, vond ik, uh, uh, ik vond het wel een beetje eng. Echt een beetje eng. En ik heb ook gezegd, let goed op jezelf. En bel me iedere keer dat het goed is. En pas goed op. Ja, en meer kan ik niet doen. Hij, hij is 28, hij is volwassen. Dat is zijn keuze. Ik, ik was bezorgd, ja, uh, om hem... Waarom? Uh, emotioneel, wat hij meemaakte, want hij heeft heel veel meegemaakt, wat hij ons ook niet vertelt. Maar ik zie dat en ik hoor dat, dus hij heeft heel veel meegemaakt. Want het is toch wel wat, als vluchtelingen op zee zijn, hè, wat ik hoorde, ze hadden geen schoenen, ze hadden geen, uh, ze hadden geen kleren, ze kwamen aan boord, ze moesten allemaal naar de toilet, uh, vrouwen met brandwonden, vrouwen die gingen bevallen aan boord. Ja, dat, 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 dat doet wat iets in zijn mensenleven. Maar het, het grootste uh, angst had ik emotioneel. Follow, follow the sun, which way the wind blows, when this day is done. I just went there for three weeks to help out and then I came back to my luxury life. Like who am I to say anything about how miserable it must be to be a refugee. I lost a bit of uh, ignorance and what I learned that maybe sometimes ignorance is bliss. Sorry for my language but it's fucking ugly to see real misery. It's, uh, it's, it's ugly, yeah.